be there. No. <laughs> Performance report. So, uh, welcome and fire away. Thank you, Phil. Kia ora. Uh, pleased to present the first report for the year. It's a quarterly report to the end of September. Um, I just want to outline a few changes that we've made to the report, um, I guess for the uh, returnee councillors, but it'll also be of interest to the, to the new councillors as well. Um, so we've put a bit of a sharper focus on the, um, we used to have the top 20 lists. What we've done is refined them to give a, um, a yeah, sharper focus across each service area. So we've, we vary the, the tops from five to, five to 10. And we've given a bit more granularity, for example, around transport. We've split it up into the uh, activity areas of safety, environment, access. And in water, instead of just doing top 20, we've gone top 10 across each of wastewater, water supply, and stormwater. Um, we've also pulled out an important program, the um, Otakaro Avon River Corridor, OARC, in there as well. And typically, the threshold, the lower threshold, is kind of around about half to $1 million, depending on which um, list you're in. So it gives you a little bit more information across those um, particular areas. I've also revised the watch list that um, accompanies the report. Um, we've removed some projects that were completed and added some additional ones in, and we've taken a view on that around sort of scale, significance, dollar value, or program criticality. So there's a new watch list in there. We've removed a bit of noise with the additional watch lists that we previously had to avoid repetition. And, and as I said, we've got more um, detail in the front end report and the cover report. Also put a bit of commentary in there on external funding sources to give a better view of that. So we're always looking to improve the report for your uh, information and, and provide it at the right level. Um, in terms of performance, um, as Peter alluded to, um, the risks um, evident through the economic environment we live in is, are still uh, there. They remain challenging um, and certainly providing um, uh, sort of cost pressures. We're seeing that through some of the change management stuff as things go to market and, and also supply chain issues. Also, um, some of the other challenges around just consents as well, but we've, um, it's a bit of a yeah. small breakthrough there with three waters, which I'll talk to in a minute. So yeah, with, um, when, I, when I reported COVID was looking, looking pretty good, now we're seeing COVID increasing a little bit um, locally. Um, and of course, some of the instability in the um, sort of geopolitical arena um, is, is exacerbating some of those cost pressure and supply chain issues. Uh, so to the numbers, the, um, the core infrastructure reported uh, for September is, um, we've got two numbers that I just want to speak to. The, the first set of numbers um, show 94% across the Christchurch City Council capital or core infrastructure, 94% against the um, budget for the year based on the forecast. The Program Management Office takes a further view of that. So that's an, the 94% is an aggregation of all the project managers who report into the, um, into the project management system. We take a bit of a program level view. We use um, our judgment past um, history and track record um, and a sort of a balanced approach across the program. And it's our view that it would be closer to the end of year um, result of 83% um, performance against the budget. So we have a lower figure of 390 million as opposed to 437 as currently forecast. And that's one of the advantages of the, the PMO is to be able to um, disaggregate it and, and see it as a, as a whole across the program. Um, just to help you navigate the report um, with the, um, the horizontal bar charts that show against um, budget, the Dark green lines show the dollars actual spent. Um, the percentage figure that's mentioned is the um, percentage against the budget for the year. So that can be greater than 100%. If it's greater than 100%, percent we would be looking to do bringbacks. I talked about bringbacks at the briefing. If it's less than 100%, you'll see a yellow line. That means the forecast is for some carry forward. So it just might help you navigate through that, through that graph. Um, and where a project has in the body of the report a little plus sign, it means it's got more detail in the watch list that we've included. So that's a brief outline, Phil. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a point I've noted in some of this 
commentary that you've provided um, with Kiwi Rail being um, perhaps a little bit slower than we would like in a number of projects. What's the relationship like with Kiwi Rail? Is that something that's really getting in the way? Yeah, I can speak to that. I know there's been some high level meetings with Kiwi Rail. Uh, Jane will speak to it. I know Dawn's met with. Uh, Things don't seem to come to anything. That's the problem. We are hopeful that this one will, though, yes. aren't we, Jane? Yeah. yeah, so we've made quite significant progress with that relationship. They've got a big program as well, big expensive program around the country. Um, and so they're, they're under as much pressure as we are in, in a lot of our capital and their capital delivery. So, yeah, we're pretty confident that we actually we've got the, the relationship on the right track. Um, sorry, Pam? Uh, sorry to add to that. We are also on site with some of the key rail bits now. So yeah. that I'd, I'd say that's sort of... Yes. Um, yeah. An example that that relationship is improving, that it's yeah. not just talk anymore. So, 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 yeah, so a couple yeah. of our projects that were stalled have now yeah, been unlocked and we're progressing. Excellent. I'm pleased to hear that because Kiwi Rail relationships one of those ones which I've heard a lot about at community board level and I would yeah. really like to see us as a council being able to work. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly feels much more positive from, from the relationship I'm having with them, yeah. Excellent. And just Thank to you. add to that, we have done a specific memorandum of understanding with real specific things in there of expectations of what each party needs to deliver. So we can hold each other to account as we move through. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, Sarah. Thanks. I'm just noticed... Um, a, a, something that pops up both in Three Waters and in transport is um, staffing, um, vacancies, recruitment, retention, those kind of issues. And how are we managing those in a way that we can make sure that A, our, the staff that are still left behind aren't completely overworked, um, but B, so that we can actually deliver the programme in time? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that, and Helen may want to um, add something. So we've had we have had a challenging year um, with recruitment and, and staff retention. Um, I think that's a national issue across a lot of sectors, not just um, the local government and the engineering sector. Um, so we, we've spent quite a lot of time investing with our people, um, supporting them um, through what has been quite a stressful year. We're finding at the moment that the um, market is uh, improving um, in terms of our recruitment, so we are recruiting a lot easier than we have um, previously um, earlier in the year. Um, you know, obviously there's uncertainties around water, which doesn't help um, but you know I, I think that the issues that we had um, are looking to go away around recruitment um, but I think that the pressure on staff is a real issue um, so there is a lot of pressure for us to deliver more um, and so as you know managers we are trying to manage that and manage expectations and I guess uh, manage expectations around this table as well yeah. in terms of what's actually possible um, so I know that our staff would like to deliver more and quicker, um, but the reality is we are limited on the um, on the resources that we have. Yeah, but with additional resources, if we're able to fill those vacancies, then we can deliver what we say we're going to. Well, we can deliver the program that we've agreed, but That's right. know, yeah, speeding yeah. it up is it would be it's tough. Yeah, yeah. too yeah. much of a challenge. Thank I mean, you. people are tired as well, so it's not just having you know the the people at the desks. People are really tired. Yeah. yeah. And you also like have to add in, yeah. um, Councillor Templeton, the issue of the private sector as well. and oh. the, Because obviously we contract to get this stuff delivered That's right. and the market is also, isn't also also able to do additionality as well. Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> we, had, we had an... I was talking to a mayoral forum just the other day, uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. Just to keep... Um, I'd like to um, see if Yanni wanted to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did. He put his hand up. He put his hand up. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so I was just concerned to read on page 97 that a report to council will be submitted once estimated final dates and costs are known for the Hornby Centre. Um, so are you able just to elaborate what's why we'd be getting another report on that, given we've already approved the budget? I think there's a report scheduled. Is there? Can someone help me with that? Yeah. Um, is Mary here? Yeah, I think there's Mary. The. Um, yeah. um, uh, yes, yes, sorry. Um, 
This is uh, uh, from the March 22nd edition of the Urban Report coming to you uh, about the LGBT issue. Sorry, is that because something's happened with the costs? Uh, yes, there are uh, issues of uh, costs, but they can find substitutions at the moment. The substitutions out of other council projects? Uh, perhaps it's best to consider that when you have the information, because I haven't got it fully in front of me, the details of it at the moment. I could find it, but it would be a delay. Right. But, so it, it is coming, it is scheduled for a briefing within the next fortnight, I think. Okay, I'm just concerned that we've already put additional resource into that project, um, and there's other projects that we've value engineered um, to keep within budget. So when do we get a chance to discuss that? We're going to get, like, things aren't going to be made that are irreversible and we're just going to be told. We'll have a chance to look at what the options are. Next, over the next, within the next fortnight for that. Sorry, I'm trying to understand if irreversible decisions are going to be made ahead of that briefing and whether we'll get a report on what the options are. Yes, uh, yes my understanding is the briefing uh, will um, come to you and then a decision will be, will be made or we, at the time that the briefing comes to you, the decision will not be irreversible. The uh, project has, uh, uh, well actually I don't want to go into detail with it, there are uh, escalations and the costs associated with uh, uh, groundwork and design. So it's best that you get the full technical people there, both on the recreation and sport side and the um, capital uh, project manager, rather than me trying to give you details of it now or else wait a minute while I get the report. Right, okay. Um, and then I just wanted to check on the Performing Arts Precinct. Has the contract been awarded? And when will that be announced? Uh, the contract is in the final stage. Um, get some certainty around cost and get the cost down. There's been a, um, a series of value engineering uh, exercises with the court theatre and the project team and the uh, the um, contractor, uh, so it, we are expecting, we're, it's very, very close, uh, so we're expecting that documentation to be able to be signed off, uh, and as you know the CE has the delegations to do that, uh, we're expecting that to be done this week, if not next week. Okay, and I just wondered, um, just the final set of questions from me is around the craft projects i was just wondering whether um staff or whether we could have a resolution to um i've proposed an amendment but also if we should add those to the watch list so we can get visibility of them around how they're tracking versus expected time frames um i'm just concerned that we don't seem to have a benchmark for delivery um and that they're taking a lot longer than um some of us would have would have liked and I'm struggling to understand, I guess, why projects that we signed off ahead of <coughs> other ones, like Richmond was signed off 18th of March, Limwood Wolfson 13th of April 2022, are still not being consulted on, um, still not being engaged with the community on, um, and have very long timeframes for delivery, when there's other projects that were approved in the annual plan that are already out for consultation. That was approved in you know, July. So if I can just respond to that, um, and Jacob will add a, possibly a little bit more detail. Um, so some projects are more complex than others um, around the, the design. Um, so we, again, just going back to, we've got you know limited resource, so we do put our resource into um, where um, the priorities are, but there are some more, com some projects are a lot more complex around how you design them. We do have to go out to consultation on all of our um, craft projects. Mm -hmm. Um, now that we've finally got um, approval from um, the community boards, that happened at the end of last term for all the projects, we've now got the whole program um, now in, in place, ready to go. So what the team's doing at the moment is looking <coughs> across the whole program. We're obviously um, delivering and continuing with projects as they're ready to go, and, and we're constructing as, as soon as we can. Um, but we're now looking across the whole craft program to make sure that we can get some efficiencies around um, joining projects together where it makes sense. 
um, we're doing the design work um, and doing the consultation that's going to roll out over the next um, year, next calendar year, um, 2023. Um, and we will be constructing as quickly as we can for all those projects, bearing in mind that we actually want to get the most efficient um, delivery as well. So it's quite complex. Um, I do note that the, um, the member has put up a, a proposed amendment asking us to report back to the next Finance and Performance Committee. Um, that would be a stretch for the um, for the team. I don't think we we've got. We'd, we, I don't think we'll be able to deliver on that um, request. It's not that far away. It's only on the thirtieth that committee, um, and the team is doing a lot of work around looking at the program now and making sure that we've got the the timeline <coughs> sorted. Um, we're also looking at the craft program alongside all the other um, transport work that we're doing um, for the annual plan um, consideration. So we're looking across our whole program. Um, the craft work is a priority, so um, that's sort of being sort of set within the context of what else we're um, looking to um, deliver. Um, but we do need to look at the whole, across the whole program in terms of advice that we're going to come back to you with in terms of the annual plan. In so um, I don't, I, you know, the craft work does sit alongside everything else that we're doing as well. So, but what so was Councillor Johansson, just in terms of your last point, could the craft work be put on the watch list? I don't think that's an unreasonable request and we'd be happy to be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be really helpful. Um, what, what, what I still don't quite understand is, given that projects were agreed to in the 13th of April or the 18th of March, what, why have they not progressed? Did we wait for all the... No, we have. Did we been, wait for all no. the community boards to no. sign off on all the craft projects before we looked at the? No, no, we have been progressing and doing design and doing consultation. So some of the projects are being um, going out to market now um, for delivery um, for construction. Um, so we do have a, a sort of a rolling program. So some projects we're about to do some consultation on, um, and some projects that were approved um, latish in the in the this year um, are now at the design stage. So we haven't been waiting for the whole program to be approved. Right. We have been progressing as as they have come through that process. But as I said, some of the some of these projects are, are more complex than others, um, and so sometimes the design test takes a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm just I, I mean, if staff can't feel like they can fulfil that amendment, but I, like you know, this isn't the first time we've made this request. I, I'm just really concerned that we do get a, some sense. Um, of how we can accelerate this, what was supposed to be an accelerated program. And I appreciate you doing work around the annual plan, but there's also projects that are happening now that have been prioritised that have leapfrogged these ones. So I think we need, at, at a governance level, to understand if we wanted you to speed up the craft work, what is it that you require to get that done? So I suggest, uh, Councillor Johansson, that we take this off board and we do a specific briefing on both the whole total position on transport and how craft fits within that. Yeah. And clearly this will be a discussion all the way through the annual plan work as well. But I don't, sorry, does that mean we have to wait till the middle of next year before we make that decision? No, not in relation to we can be briefing you in terms of what the workload looks like for the transport team and how the craft work is actually being delivered. I will remind you that our head of transport and waste did come and brief members in September, I think it was, wasn't it, Jane? Specifically so, yeah. about the craft programme and answered questions at the time. Yeah, but we asked for it to be accelerated and we didn't get how we can accelerate it. And that's the outstanding piece of information that we've never had. We've just been left to the mercy of the system, which, you know, for some of us, we feel like it's not delivering because there's other projects that are newer that are getting better progress than the craft ones. So Jane will deal with that when she comes and does yeah, the briefing. And I suggest that that probably is the conversation you have in the annual plan process, um, because to accelerate the CREF, we will have to look at across the rest of the program as well. We do. We are dealing with limited resource. Next, like if you can't do the next F and P meeting, which is the one that you could do, the one in December. Is there one in December? F and P, no. My question. My question. I got a question. I'll get it for you. Jane, can we substitute craft upcoming work and put craft work in there? So um, stuff that stuff that's on budget that hasn't started yet, can we push push that out and throw craft work in there to spend the money as fast as we can? Um, so I, I don't want to give you a response to that, just off the top of my head. I think we just need to be really sensible about how we're programming yeah. this 
bearing in mind we've got a number of stages to go through with all these projects. We've got to you know, the, get the approvals, we've got that now. We've got to do design, we have to do engagement, and then we have to go to the market and construct. So it's, uh, they, you know, it's a quite a complex um, program. Mm -hmm. We will come back with more information about that, though, when we come back and, and brief you. But, but I remember probably only one year into my term, um, the previous head of transport getting told off that the third letter meant A for acceleration, and why had he not spent any of it? And that's probably two years ago. And so I, I just, and it's all, and I listen to what you're saying, um, how you're, you're struggling to find people to do the job because everyone's busy. But I'm just wondering, are we better to put some of our stuff, that the money that our ratepayers are paying for to one side and use this craft money up as fast as we can? Um, I'm not sure if I totally understand the question, um, but you know, we, we, we've got a big programme, so it's not just about spending the money, it's actually about delivering the different services across the city. Um, so when you make a decision around prioritisation, if you want to slow other pro uh, projects down to accelerate the, say the craft projects or any other project, um, you, know, you do need to look at the outcomes that you're trying to deliver from all of this. So it's not just a matter of of thinking about delivering a faster program. Yeah, but, but you've if, got to if, look at the you've got to look at the round. If we've got X number of contract roading contractors to do the work, no, no. X number of roading contractors to do the work, and they're all to, they're all very busy. Can we help the situation by not making them busy on our? budgeted stuff and use mostly our constraint isn't the contractors our constraint is more in the design space yeah. okay thank you um, and so that tends to be where we're getting caught up and then obviously you've got to do that then the consultation then the detailed design before you can go to construct so there's quite a long process simply to get a contractor on board for craft we do actually have a contractor on board that's the point we've, we've already tended this there's someone ready to go and so some of these don't need consultation some of the bits of craft don't need consultation so they can be done fairly quickly now so is it one um, one but contract? a lot of it a lot of a lot more of the program than we expected yeah and um, turned out to be in projects that needed consultation so that's so there's a lot more of it that's tied up in that really long is, design is, consultation design so process. Mayor, we have our transport briefing at the end of november jane ensure that the specific aspects that are being raised by the mayor and elected members are covered off in that briefing, so it answers all of mm. the questions, please. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Get it delivered quickly. Yes, yeah. and the solutions will be the trade-offs, but it won't be right down to the nth degree because that will be an annual plan process. Sorry, Pauline. Yeah. Well, thank you, Look, I've got three. Um, so the first one, first two are on page 112. One of them's... Um, the Christchurch Northern Corridor downstream of Fix, wondering why the 31% um, has been deferred. Um, if you haven't got an answer to that, a memo will be fine. Um, the downstream of Fix? Yeah, sorry, I, I haven't. It's, I think it's what page is it on? 1112. 1112, sorry. Or 24. Where does it say? 31%. 31%. Okay. Closed. I mean, on the on the downstream effects, um, there are two streets, um, which are the main things we're working on at the moment. Yeah, the Francis um, and Flockton. Francis and Flockton. Yeah, I mean, there's a few other little areas that are being dealt with. And is that delayed or? Well, it's more that we're in trials on them, um, or we're in trials on Francis. Okay. So um, and I think we have a probable way forward on Flockton, but that's still oh. being. Okay. Checked and looked at. And so that just reflects waiting for the results of that. Um, yeah. And then further down with the Central City Projects, Gloucester Street, Manchester to Colombo. Um, so Waka Kotahi are now funding $1.4 million towards that. What's the total cost of that? Can you remind me? I told my head. I can't. Well, that's... Um, what Waka Kotahi are funding is through Streets for People, which is effectively trials on the street to try different layouts and different... Um, ways of using the street ahead of uh, the final design and construct. All right. Um, so, so we've still got our um, standard capital project in there, but we've got this Streets for People money to do these trials ahead of that. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so this was a special uh, fund that we bid to last or this, earlier this year. Yeah. So when are you going to start that? Uh, so we're looking. We're, we're developing options. So there's a whole lot of options that I was sent this week. Um. Okay, 
And then on page um, 122, the, um, with the Otakaro Avon River Corridor, this is really concerning about the consenting requirement and ECANS de determined that it's a prohibitive activity to expose uh, groundwater um, and it becomes a passive water take. Therefore, we, we're blocked from doing any wetland development in there potentially. Can, can you just, um, and I can see how the impasse has happened there, but are we going to find a way forward? Uh, yes, and over the past two weeks, we've had some very constructive discussions with Environment Canterbury and their consenting staff, and we've got uh, two or three options that we're advancing in terms of consenting the um, the wetlands and the stormwater work. Oh, great. That's encouraging. Thank you. So, so, so just for my benefit, Helen, that's, at the moment it's holding up some, from what I understand, it's holding up some wetlands that you want to build? Hmm. It is, although given the um, the talks over the last two weeks, we've just made the decision that we will go and tender that work for um, delivery this summer. Uh, and in the in the worst case, we will obtain consents for construction and defer getting consents for operations of those stormwater basins. Um, in the best case, we'll get all of those consents through in the next few weeks. Okay, because it's very important to do it through the summer months. Yeah. Indeed. Thank you. So can I just um, ask that... When you get the positive um, result, that we could just get a memo about it, would be really worth celebrating that. Certainly. Thank you. Yanni, Mark, did you have one? No, sorry, Yanni Kieran. Sorry, I just wanted to um, just check on the Lancaster Park War Memorial entrance gate. So they're still on target for completion in November 2022. And also, um, just on the Gloucester Street one, I mean, that, that seems like a classic example of something that's leapfrogging the craft ones and getting special treatment. So is that going to progress ahead of us even having that transport briefing? So would you like me to respond to Lancaster Park first? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, no, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to meet November. Um, we were hoping for Armistice to stay, but um, like many of the heritage rebuilds that we do, the, the deeper we dig, the harder the job gets. So it's more likely to be closer to the end of the December now, but we've been um, communicating very closely with the RSA and they're quite comfortable with how things are progressing. Um, we will be opening not just the gates at that time, but also the sort of forecourt area and the historical um, recognition work that's going on in that area. And just in response to the Gloucester Street Streets question, um, no, the resources needed to support that work um, isn't uh, isn't being taken away from the craft work. So different things. Sorry, different. is that a project that we could substitute, um, given no. that you've got Waka Kotahi funding now? No, no, it's 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 a different, it's a completely different project, different people involved. So um, if we delayed that project, it wouldn't make any different to an, different to any other project that we're doing. Right. I think when you do the briefing, like Jane, what? I think it's... Like, how does that make sense? Uh, sometimes there is a simplistic view about how things happen, and I think it's important that the interdependencies yeah. are described. Yeah, so it's a, but it's a street design, it's game design. It is, but the, but the Wakatahi funding is for trials only. So there's a real kind of basic high-level design that we then go out and put temporary measures in the street. Um, see how people like them, tweak them, change them. So it's not a desktop design until much later on. So that's the, that, which is the standard capital project that was referred so to. So the scheme earlier. design option is for the streets for people funding, not for the permanent? Yes, yes. Right, okay. And then um, in regards to um, that budget, I mean, it all needs to be spent by the end of June next year. There's no way that the budget's going to be spent. What the walk the, No, the Gloucester Street budget. That's so. You just need to. Budget. So yeah, you're probably confusing Gloucester Street projects. So no, no. I know, I know the Gloucester Street project. We've currently got on a budget. It's mm -hmm. for the money to be expended by the end of this current financial year. Mm -hmm. We had this debate through the draft annual plan. Mm -hmm. The amendment to defer it to push it out was wasn't even allowed to be put, and we were told it had to be delivered within this time frame. Now what we're seeing from here is it would appear that there's no way that that time frame is realistic. So I, I think, um, yeah, I think we're probably getting caught, a bit, caught up a little bit in some detail. I think, can we park this and then come back with a little bit more detail when we do the fuller briefing? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's carried forward. It needs to be complete by the time the 
um, theatre is open that's what we're mm. aiming towards which I think is well into next year as far as I understand We're getting into the weeds a little bit here. Um, Tyler, please. Thankfully. Uh, mine's more of a holistic question, high stuff. Um, I, <clears throat> for the new councillors, um, I'm a man of process, and uh, I appreciate that. And I'm just wondering um, what the, the key markers are in regards to reprioritising projects and um, the justifications as to why you would reprioritise. Um, appreciative of the LTP, but I'd love to hear your perspective on that. That's a great question. So next Tuesday when we do a further brief, a initial briefing on the annual plan for 24, we'll be talking about some of the higher level prioritisation criteria. So when you talk about, it, broadly speaking and without going into next Tuesday, things like um, projects that are already in flight, sort of committed, they might be already well into design and committed towards a contractor, um, where you have um, regulatory requirements to you know, meet a law. Um, uh, you might also have a critical level of service or, or a, um, uh, a, a set of um, uh, resilience criteria to meet. Those would sort of put them towards the top of the list. Other things that might be more discretionary could be things like um, some of the strategic uh, imperatives that you'll develop through the str strategic framework, say climate resilience, uh, climate change, um, the sort of nicer to have so those things can be ranked by you through that prioritization process and that particularly comes into play as you consider the LTP the long-term plan and, and we'll have some tools for you to participate in and and, um, and uh, put different weightings onto different criteria to see how they um, then get prioritized through that process yeah so almost like a multi-criteria analysis type thing MCA if you know what that is. Just capitalising on that and asking, uh, in regards to um, more environmental and social priorities, are they directed by us to be able to push those forward? Um, I'm talking about um, libraries, for example. Um, can they be reprioritised through us through the um, long-term plan or any other plans accord uh, along with that? Yeah, you would heavily influence those criteria through your considerations starting at the strategic framework, the infrastructure strategies, there's you know, limitations by the financial strategy and the various asset management plans that each service area brings to you. So you have quite a lot of influence about those decision-making points and then those guide the prioritisations for annual plans or LTPs if that's consistently um, uh, flows through. So there's, yeah, there's a okay. lot of influence you can bring to bear through those um, governance level documents. Mm. It's more than influence, you will make choices. Okay. Yeah. Pauline will probably be the I'm last one. I'm just going to put think? one on the Citizens War Memorial. Um, how's that tracking for, it's supposed to be Armistice Day? That's one question, and if it is going to be finished, is there any sort of um, event planned to celebrate its um, revitalisation? Um, it's very much like Lancaster Park. It's not going to hit Armistice Day. And again, we're in close close conversations with um, the RSA. They're not too concerned because their priority is going to be the Bridge of Remembrance. Um, um, it's, it's not being held up by anything in particular other than a very slow and meticulous restoration process. It's a very complex rebuild. Um, and, um, yeah, we're encouraging them, obviously, to... You know, it's it's not going to modify the cost, but take the time they need to do it to perfection. Yeah, so it is actually going well, um, because we've you know we we are aware that there's been quite a bit of media about that, and so you know we're ready to talk to people if they want to to get an update with a bit more detail. But it's about it's about ensuring that the project team have the space that they need to do it properly. But it's it's going very well. You're going to see some significant changes as we head to, towards Christmas. Um, yeah. So okay. do, you, do you think it might be before Christmas or you don't no idea? Um, Stay tuned. I guess for the same reasons, I'm not going to sit, sit, sit here okay. and say yes. Um, but yeah, things are going really well with the restoration, but it's a complex, complex process. Yeah. Andre. Thank you. Um, now, Purnawai Car Park and Access Improvements. I'm just wondering if we're on track to have the car park and access there by the time the Nexus Centre is completed. 
Uh, yes, we are. Um, there will be a report that will come to council uh, for final approval in December um, because we're modifying the reserve. Um, yeah, and the program of work will have it finished um, in alignment with the net Netsall Centre. Um, obviously, when the demand starts to to, to peak, and that's uh, the contractors are telling us that's approximately September next year. Beautiful. Thanks very much. Okay, can I have Paulina move it and uh, Mark will second it. Thank you. Um, anyway, any debate? I just, oh, Yanni, yes. Yeah, I appreciate the information in the report, and I do actually think these reports are excellent. They do give us a level of detail that I think is important that we get uh, at, a, at a government's level. Um, but I do think also that we do need to start focusing on the craft program. Um, you know, to put it into context, Gloucester Street has now gone up from a $3.4 million project to a um, $4.8 million project for literally one block of Gloucester Street between Manchester and Colombo. When we have um, areas in our craft program and in other suburbs like Bromley, where we've got limited funds and we're not seeing progress being made in a timely manner. And I cannot understand how these central city projects continue to leapfrog existing projects in the community that are well overdue, that absolutely need to be delivered because people's satisfaction is at some of the lowest levels we've had and yet we're still not getting the work done in what I think is a tiny manner. So, you know, I appreciate the responses we've had from staff, but I think it's incumbent on us at a governance level to set the priorities for this organisation and then to hold um, people to account to deliver against those priorities. And we've had an election, we've had a new council. Some of us have been elected on very clear mandates from our communities around what the priorities are. And in my area, it's to get on top of the basics fix the broken roads that still haven't been, and footpaths that still haven't been fixed post-earthquake and improve the safety and amenity in those local communities that were hit hardest by the um, impact of the earthquakes and also communities that have unfortunately been subject to the offensive and objectionable odours for a number of years, including the past 12 months, which has been horrendous. So I just think, you know, as council, we really do need to set the priorities really clearly. We don't have unlimited resources and I cannot accept that if we stop one project that that doesn't help deliver on some of the other projects that we feel is important. So hopefully we get a chance to weigh it all up. But in regards to Gloucester Street, it seems sensible that we would use the government funding to do the Streets for People project, but that the permanent doesn't need to be done straight away and we'd be better putting that money into fixing the things that have been agreed well ahead of the Gloucester Street being approved by council. So I've sent round councils a copy of the outline of when the craft projects were um, agreed, uh, what the projects were, and you can see the long delivery times when we've already got a contractor ready to go. And my concern is if we don't do it, then the costs will escalate and we'll get even less of what we've agreed with our community delivered because we've taken so long to do it. We need to speed it up. Mark? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I hear what you're saying there, Yanni, in, in that um, reprioritising for our communities is something that we clearly were told many a time in recent times from our communities. Um, CRAF, that A in CRAF does stand for acceleration and I struggle to understand how we can fail to understand that acceleration means actually getting it done rather than procrastinating on it. Uh, understand that we've got you know some restrictions on, on uh, resourcing um, but that's something I think as a, as a council that have now been newly elected, we need to look at our priorities and make sure that we do get them right for what we've been told. Um, getting back to those basics, like getting our footpaths and our roads that are broken in many places around the city. Um, the suburbs, have, you know, out, out west where I am, we've taken a lot of uh, extra population since the earthquakes and our infrastructure out there is groaning. And to, to hear that things can leapfrog and, and become more priority in the central city when the suburbs that, where people live their everyday lives uh, is not being dealt to. I think we need to have a serious think about our priorities and looking forward to this annual plan process to try and pin some of these down and get them moving in the right direction. Sam? Um, look, I appreciate sort of people having a debate about this, but I just want to remind people of the purpose of this report, which is literally to identify the capital program and quite rightly signal issues with it. And I say that because it's quite useful for council as we go into the annual plan where we can do that work around priorities uh, to establish those. So. 
I think everyone's quite right with coming after a new election. There are very clear mandates around getting the basics right, and there is a point for that. But the point of this, though, is to flag issues and then let the general managers and their teams go away and work out how they can resolve them. So I think Yanni's got a really good point with CRAF around putting it on the capital watch list. Uh, but actually what we need is a council, and I'm sure Jane and the team will pick it up at the transport briefing. It's just that really basic timeline around when those projects will be completed and the money associated with them so that, as Dawn had mentioned, we can make choices. So I kind of just thought it's useful at this first meeting to just outline the parameters of this report, which isn't necessarily to, um, and I don't want to use the word beat up the organisation, uh, but actually to kind of identify there are challenges and we can work through them. So I think we should just think about that as we move forward. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. Um, with that, I will, um, we've got to move in a seconder. With that, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Ooh. Carried. <laughs> right, we're up to item number eight. eight.